got my PhD in 1960, had a couple of babies, and then in, in 1963, I, uh, I was involved in a pilot approach to uh, agricultural and rural development. It was done in six villages about uh, the heads of Laguna. And so, in the beginning, you know, when you're a new PhD, you think you're better than anybody else, and you think you know more than anybody else. So when they were asking me to join them, I said, no, 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 I'm not interested. And of course, they can ask you two or three times after that. They don't ask you anymore. So I said, the world is passing by, and I'm not in it. So I decided I want to I want to be part of it. So I was in charge of the research and evaluation component of the project, and it was the it was uh, implemented by the Farm and Home Development Project at UPLB, and this had quite a bit of uh, Ford Foundation and Cornell component in it. So rice is something that I, I was really interested in. I don't know why. Perhaps it's because it's something that we eat every day. We can't do without. And it's something that you find in both rich and poor. And you, you can't ignore it. It's always there. No matter what happens, it's always there. If it's not there, you better find it. No? So that's my... And more than that, in agriculture, rice can be grown at that time, six months. Of course, now it's... Uh, I think now it's about 120 days. So it's about four months or less. So, you know, you can easily see the, the product within that period. But most of all, it is a product of science that has reached the farthest corner of this country. There are not many products of science that have touched the common man as much as rice and I think vaccines. No? So this is, uh, this is terribly important to me. In the beginning, I wasn't sure that having an institute like this within the neighborhood of UPLB, which was so poor at that time, the contrast was so great. I remember very well I think it was a secretary of education who visited the area and he looked, he looked and said, I cannot see the connection between the man who plants rice and eats rice and these fantastic buildings. Because at that time, this was just a standout compared to, to UPLB. At that time, the housing was terrible. Uh, at UPLB and all that. So, and then, of course, there were a lot of critics and people who said, if they had just given us the money, we can do it. Uh, that, that, was the, that was the thinking. And the thinking also was that uh, the Filipino rice scientists were not given, were not given as much uh, credit, you know. Well, um, I was a visiting professor at Cornell when the new rice varieties was released. Before that, I gave a seminar in the International Agricultural Development Program. And I was saying that farmers will not adopt these new varieties because they were Cadillac varieties compared to what farmers were using. And, you know, of course, Erie heard about it and 
some of them were upset. You know, why is he saying that? Then I came home, and that was 1967. So you know, that's when I got involved with Randy and all that. So then, when I saw how farmers have responded. Then that was how I produced, you know, All in a Grain of Rice, the book. And that book, people ask me, why wasn't it published by Iri? I said, I did not want Iri to publish it because at that time, you know, the Miracle Rice was very controversial. And if I say positive things about it, they would think it's because Iri paid for the book. And I want to maintain the independence of the book. And at that time, when the controversy was raging, you would have journalists, you would have economists, what have you, coming to Erie. But Erie didn't know. After they visited Erie, they will go to me to ask me, find out what I have to say. Am I saying the same thing that Erie scientists said? No? So that was um, uh, that was the time when I had written I had written the book, and as I mentioned uh, once, uh, the grant to write that book was three thousand dollars, believe it or not, during that time, and it was given by Ford Foundation, and Ford Foundation said, well, if she's going to write about uh, Iri, Iri varieties, why shouldn't Iri pay for it? And I said, no, I don't want Iri to pay for it. And so, but then he said, we've got to get some contribution from Iri. So that was when Randy said, we'll set aside $3,000 for you to travel to the other international centers. No? So it will not be for the book, but for that. But I never spent that money because then our project needed more money. And I said to Randy, why don't you use that money, you know, to cover our, our uh, uh, further needs? So that's how, it, uh, that's how it came out. So I spent, I think, 18 months you know, uh, writing this, writing this book. And it was not difficult to do because all my graduate students and everybody else in campus in Dilwan, they were all writing about the impact of the Green Revolution. So it was easy to put things together. Uh, so that was, uh, that was it. And then, uh, I think it was when they needed very much someone who would develop the gender, the women in rice farming systems program. Uh, Tina David was the head of socioeconomics. and said, Elio, why don't you, you know, spend some time with us? Then Swaminathan, talked me into it. It's hard to say no when Swaminathan, you know. Uh, so I did. I developed the, you know, the framework and traveled a great deal to these different countries to find out what the prospects are. And, uh, and uh, I developed the, uh, the program and now we are going to, how uh, we are going to proceed. Then, uh, during the time of Lampe, I knew Lampe before he came to Iri. So he would invite me to come over to the, if he has some things that are bothering him or what, he would call me and we will talk about it. Uh, because uh, he knows I will say it straight. I may be, I may be wrong, but I'll be always be honest. No? So we, we could, you know, 
exchange views very, very frankly. And so he said, why don't you, you know, really spend time here? Uh, because he found out I was about to retire. And I said, you don't have to pay me to get my input. And then he looked at me and said, are you rich? <laughs> I said, no, I'm not. OK, then it's all settled, he said. But I said, I have a commitment. Even before I retired, I already had a commitment to go to Stockholm for about uh, three months or so to evaluate their program on the international, of the International Foundation for Science. So I said, I have to wait a year, you know, before I could join you. But uh, I said, any time, you know, uh, you, can, you can call me. So that started, uh, that started it. So a year after my retirement, I came here.